Handicapper Steve here, handicapping the racing from Gulfstream Park here on Saturday. It is the 31st of December 2022. Going to look at the stakes races on the program from Gulfstream, but before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kit 5 for more selections for race courses around the world, and I mean it around the world. Um, final day of 2022, and uh, my God, um, you know, thank God it's over. You know, this year has been one of the most challenging years of my life. I don't even want to go and I don't want to repeat this year. I don't want to even re- begin. I don't want it, 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 next year. I don't want anybody to to mention 2022 to me outside of you know. I, I told all my friends that because uh, it's just been a really crap year but um next tomorrow we start a new year uh and uh, you know it's gonna be good uh with that being said we have a great closing day card from uh or cl- uh, final day of the year card from goldstream kind of pegs this world cup day uh we have six races to look at races three six seven eight nine and ten so let's get to it right now the third race it is the sugar swirl stakes it's a great three event going for 125,000 purse races for three uh phillies mayors three-year-olds and upwards field of six horses going to the main track the distance of ground of 1200 meters or the distance of ground of six furlongs on the aqueduct or excuse me on the gulf street main track uh 1200 meters six furlongs main track i'm gonna take the one horse joyful candon says a top selection let's go one six four two in the superfecta one six four two super top selection of one horse joyful candace this um four-year-old for the bait run happy here john ortiz trains tyler lake Athlione gets the mount the horse's most recent outing came the 13th of november at churchill six furlongs in the dream supreme stakes and the horse finished second by two and three quarter lengths and he just kind of stalked all the way around and just couldn't get the good turn of foot the winner who's running back in this one today, um, uh, Kobalea, uh, just had the jump on the front end to keep up, but this horse just, you know, wasn't catching her there. Uh, two back in the TCA at Keeneland, six furlongs, 8th of October. She finished third by seven lengths. She got beat by tougher horses. She just hung a little bit there. Uh, again, she needed that extra turn of foot. And then the open mine at Churchill over the six. She finished second by length. She set the pace. She got caught late, but she didn't go down without a fight. She so but she showed potential there. And then on the 13th of August at Churchill, six furlongs in a lady talk. She finished her second by one half length she set the pace again she got caught late but again she didn't go down without a fight her most recent victor- victory came in prairie meadows six furlongs in the sailorville went by five and a quarter lengths a 75 uh buyer at five cents of the dollar with lasix and butte uh she completely missed a break but she basically won in a hand wide lay that was a very good run her buyers last winter could win against these horses she's training well locally i'm gonna give her a shot i think the second leg of this one is the six horse cobalelli um you know most recently won the dream supreme on the front and all throughout and then I love the main vic- uh, then I love the Lions victory before that at um at, tr- at uh, Keeneland coming here today I w- it wouldn't surprise me either at um at uh, nine to two if she gets the job done but to recount my selection for the third from Gulfstream it is the Sugar Swirl Stakes let's take the one horse Joyful Cannons give kudos to the six horse Copielli or whatever the horse's name is um said it wrong three different times uh, I'm gonna go one six four two in the Superfecta one six in your multi race to the sixth event now from Goldstream. It is the Rampart Stakes. It's going for a hundred twenty five thousand dollar purse. Race for Phillies Mayors, three year olds and upwards. We have a field of eight horses going to the main track. Distance of ground here of twelve hundred meters, if you want to go up that, or the distance of ground is six for of sixteen hundred meters or one mile on the on the Goldstream main track. Excuse me. I haven't finished my coffee yet, so uh, you know, still a little tired. Twelve hundred uh, 1600 meters one mile here and the um rampart my top selection i'm gonna go with the four horse color for mischief I'm gonna go four seven one two in the superfecta four seven one two super top selection of four horse colorful mischief three will fill the bay into the mischief tom pletcher trains i read to junior gets the mount the horse's most recent outing came 22nd of October at Keeneland, seven furlongs in the grade two Raven run, and the horse finished seventh by 18 three quarter lengths that day and just showed nothing. Facing tough horses, didn't break so well, and just was flat. Refreshing here to the rampart over a mile trip against lesser quality horses. She's in about a spot to win. Two back in the dog with a church till seven furlongs 24th of September. She finished third by eight and three quarter lengths that day, and she just kind of stalked and never really got the good turn of foot. It wasn't her day to win. And then the lounge race on the 7th of August at Saratoga, seven furlongs there. Went by a half length from a tracking position. She took off clear late. A very good victory there, cutting back and trip. And then prior to that, she ran at uh, Churchill, mile 16th and optional 80. She finished third by two and a half lengths that day was dueling from a wide post trip but just couldn't keep up i do think she runs her better trip around a one turn she's getting back to it today she's training well at the pletcher winter base at palm beach 
going to give her a shot on the ticket, along with the Seven Horse Mary, quite contrary. Um, uh, yeah, Luca Panici's on this one. Most recent handicap locally on the... Um, on the uh, 16th of October, going seven, she won by two and a half lengths and closing up for nowhere. I thought it was a very good, clear victory. Prior to that, over the seven, the sheer drama for Staybreds. Again, she won by a net coming from nowhere. A very good victory. She's a bit of a deep closer. It wouldn't surprise me if the pace melts down to suit up for her. A very good workout on the mud last week in 47 and three. Let's give her a shot on the ticket also. There is the Rainbow Six that begins with this race, so I think you want to go too deep. But to recap my selection for the Rampart, the sixth race from Goldstream, let's take the four-horse colorful mischief. Give kudos to the seven-horse Mary Contrary, um, or Mary Quite Contrary, um, 4712 Super, 47 in your multi-race. To the lawn with the seventh race now from Goldstream, it is the Shawnee River Stakes. It's going for um, a purse of $125,000, grade three event here. Phillies and Mayors, three-year-olds and upwards. We have a field of 10 horses. Going to the Goldstream Park turf course, the distance of ground here of 1,600 meters, or the mile trip on the Goldstream turf course. 1,600 meters, a mile here in the Shawnee River. My top selection, I'm going to go with the number seven horse, Stolen Holiday. Let's go 7 1 10 3 in the Superfecta. 7 1 10 3 Super. Top selection, seven horse, Stolen Holiday. This um, five year old mare by Warfront, Shug McGay, he trains. Junior Alvarado gets the mount. The horse is most recent out of Kim, 5th of November at Keeneland. One mile in the fall harvest stakes, and the horse finished fourth by three lengths that day. And, you know, she just sat back early, uh, stalking most of the race, excuse me, and she just never really got the good turn of foot. First start since June. She desperately needed the race. Refreshing here, second off the bench to Goldstream. I love her so much that I think I'm going to single her in the pick five and pick six that begins with the previous race. Two back in the Eaton Town at Mom at the mile 16th, 18th of June. She won by a length and on the front end all throughout. A very good breather to the half and 50. 114 and uh, 1 to 3 quarters. She won it that easily late uh, at 8 to 1 and upset her. It was an all around good race, earning a 96 buyer. Definite improvement off the race before, which was Bugay at Belmont, a mile 16th on the inner turf course. She finished 6 by 5 and a quarter lengths that day, and she just kind of stalked and never really kind of got the good turn of foot. First start up north, maybe she needed the race for the experience, and then a goal stream about a mile 16th in the Sand Springs last April. She finished second by 1 3 quarter lengths and was really closing up well. Um, a little traffic that day, but she still ran her heart out there. And then an optional third to at uh, Tampa uh, last um February, she won by six and a quarter and on the front end all throughout. She got the job done. Coming here second off the bench, she should be cranked to go. And I think at nine to two, she's a very likely winner. Let's single her in the pick five. To recap my selection now for the seven from Goldstream, it is the grade three Shawnee River. Let's take the seven horse stolen holiday. Let's go seven one ten three in the Superfecta. The eighth event is now from Goldstream. It is the Mr. Prospector Stakes. It's a grade three event going for $125,000 purse, race for three-year-olds and upwards. We have an oversubscribed field, and I hate the fucking racing form today the way they have it. Basically, if you want to, this is the eighth race, beginning of the eighth race from Goldstream. You have to go through everything else to get to the uh, the opposite end of the racing form. One second, just just tug a bunch of yourself. Um, you have to basically go through that much of the racing form to get to the other side of the, ra the uh, Mr. Prospector. But we have a field of 12 horses is going um, the distance of ground of 1,400 meters or seven furlongs in the Goldstream Park main track. My top selection here in the Mr. Prospector, I'm going to go with the number seven horse here, the seven horse who is prevalence. Let's go seven... 4 3 12 in the Superfecta. 7 4 3 12 Super. Top selection 7 horse prevalence. This um, 4 year old Colt by Medalli de Oro. Brendan Walsh trains. Tyler Gaffleone gets the mount. The horse is most recent out and came 19th of October. Keeneland. 6.5 burrows and allowance race 140,000. And the horse finished fourth by 9 quarter lengths that day. And he just kind of stalked and really just never had the good turn of foot. It wasn't the day to win. But first start back since October. I think he needed the race. Second back to the home base of Goldstream Park where this horse absolutely likes running. I expect him to run a good race, and I expect him to win today. Four for three locally. Two back at the Churchill Downstakes of Churchill. Seven for long, seventh of May. He finished seven by 38 lengths that day, and he was wide and just didn't show up. Maybe he bled with no Lasix. You know, he just didn't really run a great race there. But prior to that, in the Commonwealth at Keeneland, the grade, grade three Commonwealth over the seven furlongs on the slab, he won by two and a quarter lengths, and from a track position, he took off clear late. I thought that was a very good victory. Prior to that, the 5th of March at Goldstream, one mile and up 6-2, he won by four and three quarter lengths, earning a 99 career 
your best buyer. Another very good Reezy run. If all remember, he was a horse that was very talked about in the winter of 2021 when he broke his maiden here at Goldstream going seven, win by eight and a half lengths, came back to win by three in a mile optional 75, earning an 83 buyer, and then kind of disappointed in the Wood Memorial course where I bet him and ran horribly in the Pat Day Mile. His two worst races have come locally at uh, Churchill, so maybe he just doesn't like that track. But refreshing here, I think he's a very likely winner. I think you also have to give kudos to the um, four horse here, who is um, Papa Cap. This um, three year old by gunrunner Mike Cassie trains. Joel Rosario gets the mount. Most recently in the Amsterdam, the horse just got beat by tougher horses. Goodnight won quite nicely. This horse just finished fourth by seven lengths, never really showing up. Before that, he placed Ben Jack Christopher in the Pat Day Mile and in the uh, in, in, in Woody Stevens. His two turn races last winter, he just wasn't up to par, but when he cuts back. That's where he runs his better races, I thought. He doesn't need to lead. I think he close up well in this one, and it wouldn't surprise me if he could finally end off the season with a victory. He's been facing with... The, he's been running against big boys, just not winning, uh, but running okay races. Way down the class ladder, I'm going to give him a shot here at 4-1, um, to one. but to recap my selection for the 8th from Goldstream, it is the Mr. Prospector. Let's take the 7-horse Prevalence as a top selection. Give kudos to the 4-horse Papa Cap. 7-4-3-12 Super. 7-4 in your multi-race. To the ninth event now from Goldstream. It's the feature on the program. A very good race. It is the Fort Lauderdale Stakes. It's a great three event, or excuse me, great two event, going for a $200,000 purse. Races for three year olds and upwards. We have a field of 13 horses entered, but only 12 could go to the Goldstream Park turf course. The distance of ground of 1,800 meters, or a mile and one eighth on the Goldstream Park turf course. 1800 meters a mile one eighth the rails are out of 56 feet so it's the outer portion of the turf course there's going to be two rail settings the zero feet inner turf course and the outer turf course at 56 feet so you're gonna have a little bit of a narrow turf course which i don't really like about when they put the tapita in they basically um you know got rid of those wide turns here at Gulfstream. so you need to have a good trip now i think on this turf course but um there are a few you know something i've noticed about Gulfstream also since they put in the tapita the turf races are like you know they're not running so i think they should hopefully cart a little bit more of them but my top selection here i'm going to take the three horse palo alto i'm going to go three ten twelve one in the superfecta three ten 12-1 Super, top selection, three-horse Palo Alto, Fibro Gun by Intello, Grand Motion Trains, gets Ruiz up in the saddle. The horse's most recent ad came 13th of November at Aqueduct on a very yielding turf course, uh, very, very soft, one mile in the great, uh, in the listed Artie, Artie Schiller stakes, and he finished third by two lengths that day, and he just stalked, but never got the good turn of foot. Like I said, I thought the turf course was just a little bit too soft for him, running on a lot faster going from a tracking position with a good postra. I think he should get a good trip, and I think he went here today. Two back in the Knickerbocker at Aqueduct, a mile on the 8th and 9th of October. He finished the 8th by four lengths that day, and he just didn't show up. He was wide, and, you know, the pedestrian fractions really got to him. One fourteen 14 and 4 to 3 quarters. You're not going to win off of that where he was early on. Uh, and then first start stateside, 10th of September at Pimlico, one mile on the Baltimore-Washington Turf Cup. He finished second by one and a half lengths that day. He stalked. He had the lead. He got overtaken late, but he still ran his heart out there, and and then the group two, Prudent du Mouget at saint Clou over the mile in soft ground. He finished fifth by one quarter lengths. And again, he stalked but just never had the good turn of foot. He hasn't won since winning in Doha and in, in Qatar back in February. One mile in, um, in a local group two, group three. Went by one three-quarter lengths from a track position. He got the job done. And then he won a conditions race in February before that at... Um, excuse me, in January, Consumer is on the poly track over the mile, and he got basically won it from a front-end position. He doesn't like running on the soft stuff. He likes running on firm ground. If he gets it today, he could really put on a show. I'm going to use him here on the ticket. I think your second likely winner is the 10 horse here, King Cause for Jose Ortiz and Mike Maker. Most recently in that Knickerbocker where he said in those pedestrian fractions, he won off of it. Won by two lengths earning a 98 buyer. He basically took off clear. Excellent ride by Kendrick. Two back in a handicap in Kentucky Downs over the mile. He finished second by a half a length. He stalked. He had had a lead. He just couldn't go keep up late, but he didn't go down without a fight. I thought he showed potential. And then Del Mar in one mile and optional 80. He won by a half length, closing up a mid-pack, drifting a little bit late, but he still got the job done. He started once here at Goldstream in the uh, McKnight last year, where I thought the mile and a half was just a little bit too long for him and setting a little bit too fast fractions. It, it came back to win uh, two starts later in the Kentucky Cup Classic at Turfway very, very nicely. He has the speed to win here. He should get a good trip. It wouldn't surprise me at 5-1. to one. The 12 horse Colonel Liam might need the race, but he is also another likely winner we'll use in the multi-race. Tom Pledger trains this five-year-old horse by Liam's mat. Ira Tease Jr. gets the mount. Was supposed to run a few weeks ago in the, um, 
what was the race? The uh, and an allowance race over the seven and a half uh, about two Wednesdays ago, but he was scratched out of it because uh, it was taken off the turf, and also he's el- also eligible. But um, you know, so they're not getting the uh, luxury of a prep race for this one. But most recently, he ran at Dubai in the Dubai turf, and he finished nice by seven and a half lengths and just had nothing. Really, he didn't show up. It wasn't his day to win. Before then, the Pegasus World Cup turf, he won by length that day, repeating in the Pegasus. He took off clear and just got got going. One o two career best buyer and then prior to that in Manhattan he finished eighth by 10 and, qu- 10 and three quarter lengths again never really showing up but he likes running locally he's for three for three on this turf course he won the uh, tropical park derby in February 2020 nicely came back to win the Pegasus in 2021 over the mile three sixteenths nicely and came back to win this race last year he sprinkled in the turf classic in 2021 as a victory and the Muniz Memorial before that also against some tough horses there coming here at eight to five training well I'm gonna give him a shot but he might have needed that prep race a few weeks ago but to recount my selection for the featured ninth race from Goldstream. It is the grade two Fort Lauderdale. Let's take the three horse Pale Alto as top selection. Give kudos to the 10 horse King Cause and the 12 horse Colonel Liam. Um, 310 12 1 Super. Uh, 310 12 Inner Multi Race. The, the co feature 10th race, a local prep race for the um, Pegasus, the 10th race. It is the Harlan's Holiday Stakes. It's a grade three event going for $150,000 purse. Race for three year olds and upwards. So we have a field here of eight horses going to the post. The distance of ground of 1,700 meters or the distance of ground of a mile and 1 16th on the Goldstream Park turf horse. Excuse me, main track. 1,700 meters, mile 1 16th here on the dirt. Not turf. Pardon me, I can't speak today. Um, my top selection, I'm going to go with the number seven horse. The seven horse who is Skippy Longstocking. 7241 for me in the Superfecta. 7241 Super. Top selection, seven horse Skippy Longstocking. Three year Colt by Exaggerator. Savvy Joseph Jr. trains. Ira Tease Jr. gets the mount. The horse's most recent nine came 24th of September at Parks, a mile and eighth in the Grade 1 Pennsylvania Derby. And he finished ninth by 15 three quarter lengths that day. And he just kind of stalked early on, but never really got the good turn of foot. He was basically done five eighths or four and a half from home. Refreshing here to Goldstream where he likes running. Should get a good trip from Y Poster if he leaves. I'm gonna give him another shot to win. Two back in the West Virginia Derby on the slop at Mountaineer, mile eighth, sixth of August, and he won by one and a half lengths that day. He stalked, he got a wide trip. He got the lead, and then he took off clear. Very good run. Career best one and two buyer. And then prior to that, the Belmont Sticks at Belmont, a mile and a half. He finished third by six and a half lengths that day. He, you know, didn't have the best beginnings. And he just, you know, got beat by two incredible horses. He ran his heart out, but, you know, he just couldn't keep up late. And then before that, in the Preakness at Penlico, with the mile three sixteenths, he finished fifth by seven three quarter lengths. From the nine of nine post, he was wide throughout. He moved a little bit late, but early voting really ran a terrific race. Epicenter finished second round, terrific race. This horse is wasn't getting to him. He won here at Goldstream in the past already around two turns. That came on the 2nd of March. A mile and eighth and up to 75. Went by three and three quarter lengths from a track musician. He took off clear. Very nice race. Likes running here. Training well. Half mile workout last Saturday in 47 and 1. Let's give him a shot on the ticket. I think your second likeliest winner here is the two horse Pioneer Medina. Um, Luis Saez is on this one for Tom Pletcher. Most recently in mid-November at Churchill, mile 16th and up to 125. He won by a half length. Improvements of the race before. He sat back early. He really closed up well late and he got the job done. They really suit up for him with that quick half mile. Before that though at uh, Keeneland, a mile and eighth and up to 125. He finished eighth by 12 and three quarter lengths that day. He had a horrible beginning. He was wide throughout and you know, he just can't win off of that and he should have broke better. Uh, and then prior to that in the Smarty Jones at Parks over the mile 16th, he finished eighth by 18 lengths that day. And off the bench, first start back from the Derby. He desperately needed the race. Refreshing here today. He, if he runs some of his races like he ran at the at the fairgrounds last season, he could definitely get win against these horses. I give him a shot here at six to one. He should definitely get a better trip than the the two races before that. But to recap my selection for the tenth race from Goldstream, it's co-featured Harlan's Holiday. Let's take as a top selection the seven horse Skippy Longstocking. Give kudos to the two horse Pioneer Medina. Seven two four one super. Seven two in your multi race. So good luck to all. Please follow me on Twitter at horse. Racing Kid 5. Good luck, everybody.